Hi, my name is Jonathan Cohn, and I'm here to talk about my uh, submission for the LabVIEW contest called XGrapher. An XGrapher is an X-Control-based graphing utility that allows you to easily display large amounts of data, but more importantly, navigate through large amounts of data by zooming, panning, uh, and, and really expanding certain areas that are of interest. Um, this really helps with because the standard LabVIEW controls for waveform graphs are a little bit uh, cumbersome and some people new to LabVIEW just really don't understand the whole zooming, expanding, and, and uh, which way to, to move the graphs. So what I built here is a, an application called the XGrapher demo. And if we go ahead and run this, uh, what this does is it allows you to generate some random data, random data here. So uh, we have a data type of sine waves, sine with harmonics, random numbered noise, anything like that. Uh, you have the ability to choose how many plots you want and uh, some property nodes right here which we'll get to later but um, the main thing to notice is that you have a standard waveform graph which is um, this area right over here which allows you to to view just as you normally would uh, your sine waves uh, but the more important thing is this timeline graph on the bottom and this timeline graph on the bottom actually shows all of the data from start to finish of recording uh, in a timeline view and these cursors over here are actually the area in which you are most interested in so the area in which you want to view uh, uh, that clip of data. So think of this, if anyone's ever done any video editing, uh, you can go and crop your area uh, and view that in a more important way. So what we have here is a left and a right cursor, which actually highlight when you move your mouse over them. And uh, really, if you want to expand your area of interest, you just click and drag the cursor and move it out. And what's that gonna, what that's going to do is it's going to uh, expand the range of the main waveform graph so that you can view more data uh, in that timeline area. Same thing with the left cursor. You can click and drag that to zoom in. And what this lets you do is if you wanted to, to see uh, the blue peak right over here and just really see that area, well you can grab the left cursor right there and grab the right cursor and uh, you're pretty much viewing on the waveform graph that, uh, that area right there. Now another feature is the ability to click and drag your selection and basically pan it from one area to the other using that same span that you had before. So if I wanted to see this blue uh, valley down over here, I could just click and drag this area and um, move it over there. Uh, so you have the ability to expand, which is the, uh, the same as zooming in and zooming out, and you have the ability to pan, which is the same thing as shifting the time frame uh, of your graph. And um, there are some other nifty features in here, which if you play around a little bit more, you'll see. Uh, for instance, you don't have the ability to click and drag the selection outside of the region, it'll actually stop right there, it butts up against the edge. Uh, same thing with this area over here. Um, if you start dragging and you get very close to the edge, uh, it's going to stop and uh, butt up against there. Um, so it won't let you get into a crazy way where you've now also flipped the cursors. If you flip the cursor the other way, it'll go back to normal. Um, now, there are in order for this to work properly, I needed to be able to let the developer, also known as you, uh, to be able to hook into the normal waveform graphs and change their properties and do this all programmatically too. Uh, so if you take a look on the top, there's a few other options. You can show the X scale, which is actually calling a property node, which will um, show the X scale in the waveform graph because that might be important. You also have the ability to use property nodes to set the cursor uh, positions over here. So if I click set cursor and I say 100 to 300 uh, and hit OK, well that's programmatically going to move the cursor um, the cursors to that area. Um, there's also another feature here which I put in last minute which uh, is called cursor redraw and what I, what I realized is that if for instance you have a very slow computer and you have a lot of data to plot uh, it might lag a little bit um, and that's just the way that the UI calls are done in LabVIEW. Um, so if you uncheck this and then you move your cursor, well it actually doesn't update the, uh, the main waveform graph until you actually let go of the cursor. So I'll let go right now and now it'll perform the update. The same thing with shifting the graph. It won't update until you finally let go and then uh, that click will send the event to redraw the screen. Uh, I've never seen any lag problems with my computer so I just normally keep it on all the time. Uh, one other feature that I added last minute was the ability to track uh, away from graph with your actual with your mouse and uh, what this will do is plot a little dot on there and if you take a look at the top left hand corner this will show you the uh, position x and y of the data point that you're looking at. To change plots all you do is move your mouse over that plot and um, 
you can track that one. So it just gives you a nice way of, of viewing data, representing it a new way. Um, there are also some other hidden features. Uh, for instance, right-clicking on the uh, timeline graph will allow you to get a, a, a menu. For instance, selecting all will expand the cursors all the way out uh, to their extremes. Um, you can also send a, a right-click, set, set the right cursor position by right-clicking, and that will expand out. And you can also um, set the left right over here. And you can also set either right or left in the center, and that will shorten it up. So programmatically, you can pretty much do anything with this. Um, and this is all contained within an X control. So the data type of this whole section over here is just a waveform graph, uh, an array of doubles. Uh, and in the next video, I will actually show you the block diagram of this, as well as the block diagram for uh, the X control itself, and I'll show you how things are done. So I hope you like it, and if you do like it, don't forget to vote. Thanks!